Hey, everybody. Welcome back to The Best Thing Ever, a podcast about the stuff our friends like. Like I said last week, I am on record as being uh, publicly a bit of a hater. I, uh, in the last week, I've hated DIY projects, blood drives, amateur fireworks, but not professional ones. Pee Wee Herman buying books as gifts and the mail. So my point is I can drink from the keg of Haterade with the best of them. So this is a show about learning about the stuff my friends like and learning how to love again. Each week we nominate a topic or one of our guests nominates a topic that could be the best thing ever. We get a presentation on it. We do a deep dive into it. We lay out the pros and cons and then we rank it on the master list and make it compete with every other thing that could be the best thing ever. And this week we are talking about kids. Human children is the topic for this week. It's episode 20 of season one, having children, are they the best thing ever? And uh, it's going to include such images as, uh, I'm just going to, this is, I haven't seen this presentation yet, so I'm just telling you some things I saw. I know it's going to have John Stewart, a young John Stewart. I know it's going to have Babe Ruth, I assume, because his name is Babe, like, like a child. And then also, mm-hmm. for some reason, the NFL preseason draft 2022, mm. August 4th <laughs> through 28th. I can't wait to see what this is all about. But first, let me introduce you to the panel. I am your host. I'm a comedian in Los Angeles, and a fun fact about me, oh, I like to tell, by the way, I like to introduce everybody in a game I call Two Hosts and a Lie, so I'm going to tell you a fun fact about each of us, and two of those facts will be true. So, uh, again, I am, I'm your host, and a fun fact about me is I am banned from working for the Target Corporation. I cannot mm. work for the Target Corporation. Also joining us, our, our, marketing, our chief marketing daddy, uh, Mr. Ezra Fox, also in California, and a fun fact about him is he has been to Hawaii more than 10 times. Uh, my next uh, my next island is free. I get the punch <laughs> card. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I hope it's you, you go 10 times, you get an island for free, and not you just get a free sandwich. Yeah, it's uh, really impressive that we're not going to tell you how many times, but it's more than 10, less than 1,000. Yeah. I somewhere think, yeah. in between somewhere in there. there. Fa- yeah. Bet. Here's uh, where they get you. You don't get to pick the island. Yeah. So, oh, on the free one. You, yes. Yeah, it could be like, what's that? The island where like... They always give you the smallest island. Yeah, you get Molokai. The yeah, one, yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You, get, you get the smallest one they have, you know. <laughs> um, also joining us, our resident historian, Mr. Anthony Lopez in Portland, Oregon. He A fun fact about him is as a kid, he got a blood parasite from a petting zoo. Yep. Don't share needles, kids. <laughs> Don't share needles with goats. They're dirty animals. Him, him and a goat's just doing some heroin in yeah. the petting zoo. You know, it's like they're at work, so they go out behind the, the yeah, yeah. The thing I mean, get high. Petting zoo animals are a lot like kitchen staff, right? Yeah. They're probably high. <laughs> they 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 work there because no one else will hire them. <laughs> They do their jobs well, but they're usually pretty fucked up. Well, so it's just how it's of, the nature of the beast. Speaking Literally. of things that have kids, Ezra has kids, uh, and mm. we are going to talk about it today. Today, the topic: human children. Ezra, this was your topic. So first, tell us why did you pick having kids as one of the possible best things ever? So, so I should I should really clarify the way I've taken this. So, um, <laughs> not specifically having them, just them as a, as a, as a oh, thing. Oh, okay. Because uh, I don't think you actually have to have kids in order to get the full, uh, like, you can, you can be a great uncle, you know, right? You can be a great aunt. You could, like, uh, I think be a good teacher, right? There's lots of ways you can, like, just kids, I think, are a really great thing. Uh, not a thing, which also makes this problematic. Yep. Uh, yeah. Person. Um, person, people, someone's. Um, but, yeah, basically. I think basically, they are things until they're seven legally, right? Mm. Uh, well, so this is the thing. I'll, I'll, this is what I'll be talking about where... Um, <clears throat> for a, a lot of the kid's life, you, you know, you'll be freaked out about some stuff, but that's the preseason, right? Those are not actual uh, memories the that they're making. Preseason 2022, mm-hmm. August pre-season. 8th through 24th. Um, uh, at I some see. point, it crosses over, and you need to know what you're doing. Uh, uh, but you get a little bit of leeway there early on. Um, but, but basically, yeah, my thinking is just I don't need people to have kids necessarily, but I think kids are real cool in lots of different ways. Uh, we, it, we were them. I think for, for everyone here, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. we all have in common. I think it would have been really funny if Ezra's whole take was just like, population is dwindling. We need more children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, his, his whole <laughs> the his pitch. billion people, and we need them yeah. now. His whole thing was just like, look, I looked at the numbers. It's really bad. Yeah. We're not making kids fast enough. Everyone needs to get yeah. on having kids. We're not, we're not making quota. Everybody get into it right yeah. now. 
I, yeah, end of the month, you got to have kids. I feel like there is sometimes a bit of a vibe from people who have kids that they desperately want you to catch up with them. And mm. I, uh, I don't know if it's sinister or if it's just getting the population to the right level, but you've never been one of those I, people, as. No, I, 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 I try to be... I try to be honest about my kid experience uh, in a way that I felt like people were not honest with me. So that's, that's what you're going to get from this presentation at the very Excellent. least. I, um, I feel like that too. I do feel like I've gotten a lot. I mean, my, most of my vision of what having kids will be like is based on you and your take on it. Oh, no. It has, it has the right amount of sadness to be plausible. Mm, a lot of people, they right. skip that. They try to make it sound too good, and I know it's bullshit. But the, you have the right – but still optimism, but the right amount, as you'll see, you guys, I assume, will see, the right amount of negativity to make it believable. Mm. Um, yeah. So I, I guess I'll, I'll say for, for core memory, uh, you know, being a kid, I, I think uh, – I remember this one week I uh, uh, got locked uh, out of the house. I got locked in a bathroom. I got, like, stuck in a, in a jacket, and I feel like that's a good – that's a good wait is this a core memory like a kid for me okay okay i thought you were saying this was a core memory of having kids like yeah, one of your first ex- stuck in a jacket yeah exactly i thought you were gonna say like my like, first thing that happened to me as a dad was like i stuck in the bathroom in a jacket and i was like good god as um i That's love the, yeah okay still. so so f- i don't know if it's my first memory but like i have this group of core memories of being a child that are all hitting my head on stuff <laughs> mm. I had this thing as a kid twice at least where I fell and hit my head and a huge goose egg yeah. appeared on my my head which has got to be so scary and this is going to tie into what I'm going to ask you about when I have when we have time for Q&A as is uh uh boy huge bumps on the head that's got to be terrifying right it's your parents well you were not the first child if you had been the first child your parents would have been freaking out they're that's probably yeah, yeah. less freaking out uh, which is that's the that's one of the best things about having multiple kids is that it's like mm-hmm. um, if you ever saw the movie uh, About Time, uh, if time travel, they recommend going back to a day you've lived before and doing nothing but knowing that it's going to be okay. Basically, just getting that's kind of what it is that's to, smart. to, to, yeah, to yeah, yeah. do it again, where it's like you have the same wonder but way less anxiety. Well, the, so the three head wounds I remember the clearest. One was falling off a couch onto the corner of a coffee table. One mm. was falling off those metal horses outside of a grocery store. Mm. I decided it was over before the horse decided it was over. <laughs> We're done here. Concrete. You got to respect the mechanical animals. You, do, if you don't yeah. respect the mechanical animals. They're not going to respect you. It's, it's like so a real true. horse. It's you know? exactly right. It's like almost like I got kicked by that horse. And then the other one I, mm. I mentioned on the show before as one of my fun facts was getting uh, sort of hit by a car, but sort of I hit the car where it was moving slow enough and I was running fast enough into it that I hit face first on the side of the car and bounced backwards. And then the rear view mirror clipped my head. And that was my injury was the rear view mirror of the car hitting it. I ran into a car. So those are at least three major head wounds. But then my biggest memory of that third one of the whole experience, the strongest experience I remember of getting hit by a car was that I got a McDonald's milkshake on the way home, and my sister didn't. Mm. Leaving the yeah, hospital, it's... they bought me a milkshake because I was sad. Not one for Julia. And I remember that really distinctly. And it's possibly the greatest moment of my life. <laughs> a- Anthony, what, what, what do you know about uh, being kid? Um, I don't really remember anything until I was like 12 years old. It's like uh-huh. my first memory. I have a very bad memory of my childhood. Um, if we're just talking about incidents uh, <laughs> and sort of like hor- horrific violence inflicted on children, I get a it. lot. I got a lot of that. I remember this didn't happen to me. But I to be clear, I was inflicting I was like, all that violence on myself as yeah. a child. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when I was like um, speaking of just scary things that. Um, as somebody who's going to be a father soon, this memory I've been thinking about a lot. So when I was like, I don't know, probably five or six, I mean, uh, a neighbor kid were racing our bikes down a hill, and he took the lead in front of me, and mm-hmm. I was like really upset that he got in front of me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then immediately a truck pulled out with a ladder <gasps> hanging off the back. No! And like out of a Looney Tune. Yes! The ladder went right in front of his face. Uh! And like... I remember him staying still and the bike continuing to go no. down the hill. Oh, no. um, but uh, I remember like... he's okay now. Yeah, he was okay. It was the first time I ever saw someone pit teeth and milk. 
um, to like keep them good, so oh. they can get the teeth put back in the kid's head because uh, uh, he got a bunch of teeth knocked out. But yeah. I remember one that was a good lesson because it one it taught me like sometimes second place is awesome. Mm-hmm. Right? Sometimes you want to be in second place. <laughs> so true. You know, yeah, it, yeah, it's I a real like it's first like guy through the. Yeah. First guy through the door gets shot, right? Yeah, like, second so, like, gets I, the cheese every time. Yeah. I, I think that the thing that, that I want us to take away from this is generally the world is, uh, on a physics level, not super kind to kids. I think is, is, that's the one thing that, that is – But like, at the same time – They bounce back How this easily. universe works. It's not great. Yeah. yeah, kids have a leg up on physics because they're made of rubber. Yeah. And they just bounce. I mean – Oh man, I just thought of a th- another head trauma. I think this explains a lot of what I am. But I, mm. my, okay, so my neighbor Thomas, his dad bought his older brother boxing gloves for a birthday, and what he decided he really wanted for his. Hey, birthday, how old are we talking here? Like, so we were probably ten. His brother was like fifteen. So his okay. brother and his brother's girlfriend decide what they really want for this gift is to give the gloves to his younger brother and his younger brother's friend and to have them fight in front of him. Nice. So me and the other 10-year-old are boxing. And all I remember, this is the only time I've ever boxed, I remember being like, okay, oh, he just left himself wide open. This is my shot. And I went to go with everything. And then I remember waking up on the floor. So mm. at some point, I thought I, had a, I thought I had him good, and he knocked yeah. me clean out. Yeah. And I remember his brother and his brother's girlfriend nowhere to be found. Abs- like, yeah. I got knocked out and they left town, just bailed. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe they, there was like two hours they tried to wake you and they're like, you know what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't no, be no, no, here. No. We cannot know. be responsible. He's just sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, so kids. Right. So kids seem like fun. Um, we gotta we gotta remember to keep adding visuals to this. If you're watching on YouTube, youtubecom slash Alex Falcone, you're gonna get some great visuals from Ezra's presentation. We left the core memory uh, blank, so mm. should really have added some images uh, of head trauma. In, in honor of the concussions that Alex is sustaining, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's nothing there. <laughs> I mean, that's what it is. It's really having kids is just just wondering how many concussions a brain can take. Um, and at least in my um, case, the answer is that's at actually... least three. Who can, yeah, mm. but but um, that I think that actually is a really good point about the interesting thing about having kids. Also, like like so, being a kid definitely it's fuzzy, right? Lots of those years we don't remember those pre preseason years didn't count. A um, lot of injuries, and then also the weird thing is you know having them, uh, it gets real blurry. Also, I think um, there's good <laughs> reasons for that where it's like you probably wouldn't have, you wouldn't want to keep on reliving this if you knew what you were getting into always. Oh and so, yeah. For the population to keep on growing, I think you kind of have to forget some stuff. Mm-hmm. I think that's exactly right. Uh, that's a that's a very good point. That it's for very different reasons. A lot of blurry time. Yeah, um, I mean your your brain <laughs> is looking out for you. You know what I mean. And yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. your brain is just like, you know what? I'm no need to retain any of this. This is all bad. Yeah. Let's just shut it down. <laughs> no memories of this. You know. I I don't know why you guys don't have nearly You're... as many head injuries to talk about. I mean, ours may have just been so complete that we really don't have them in our <laughs> memories. But I, I, I don't. I, I have like a couple. Like I, I fell out of a treehouse. My mom caught me. Um, oh. I, I fell out of a uh, olive tree. Uh, my mom did not catch me that time. Mm. I fell off a rocking chair. I hit my head on a like a fireplace. I mean, like yeah, there's so your things. mom's one for uh, three on catching. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, See, like I, uh, I, I was I'm Ruth, just you yeah, know d- defensive. I um. I, uh, I I hurt my legs a lot as a kid. Like, I broke Ooh. my legs a few times. And that, you know, so I was, like, the opposite head. I, I kept my head safe. I hurt my feet. That was my okay. head, you know? Yeah, that's that's, I mean, those, that's those the opposite. Better. It yeah, does exactly. seem like structurally you're built for your feet to be first towards danger and your head to be last. But I always, I guess I lean forward when I do activities. Yeah, you're like the... The Gonzo of yep. uh, all of us. You're just launching out of a rocket head first. All the time. Second. All right. Let's oh, uh, yeah. let's find out more about human children okay. from Ezra. Ezra, it is time for the deep dive. And let me pretend I had this queued up all on. The deep dive into human children. Oh. Ezra, you oh, are in no, control. I'm phrasing of that specifically. <laughs> Okay, um, so first off, I was thinking it'd be fun. Gut check. How's everyone feeling uh, about how great kids are on the list? Uh, scale of one to one to nineteen. Just, just, just don't have to think about it. Don't have to even look at what's there. Just, just off the top of your head, 
what do you think? Where do you think it would be for you? Um, you know, I I will start saying, you know, my I'm currently my wife and I are preparing for a first child. Mm-hmm. Um, we uh, will do uh, in September. Mm-hmm. So if you're listening to this post September, I would already have been a father at that point. Very mm-hmm. cool. And um, it, it it's it's pretty scary and it's pretty overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. and I'm worried a lot and mm-hmm. I'm anxious a lot. Yeah. Um. So I haven't gotten really any of the benefits from having a kid yet. Yeah. I've only gotten all the bad things and all the anxiety. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to say not very high. And so, here's the thing. I like kids. Yeah. I'm good around kids. I'm not a big fan of babies with squishy skulls. Yeah. Yep. It freaks yeah. He me said out. kids. He didn't say babies. Yeah, but they freak you know, it's, me it's out. All. I'm very, very stressed out about this. I'm incredibly worried and anxious all the time. Yeah. So right now, I'm definitely going to say kids are worse than pro wrestling pretty <laughs> easily. Um, okay. I would say they're pretty much worse than romance novels. I would definitely say, even with all my anxiety, I like kids more than the Nordic track. Um, okay. Uh, but, yeah, that's what I would so say. So where does that okay. put it? That oh, was somewhere. Seven? I'd have to look at the list. I don't know. I'll, 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 I'll figure it out. Alex, how about you? Uh, the, that would put you above Nordic track would put you at 12 and 13. Um, that's actually exactly what I was going to say. I was going to say 13 because uh, it's not, not, not quite as good as fresh bread. I really like okay. fresh bread. 13s. Yeah. I think it, so that's a fine baseline because mm-hmm. here's the thing. You know, I, I like to measure things. You know, mm-hmm. it's like our, our, yeah, our yeah. growth chart. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, that's our starting point. 13. Can we beat it? Uh, let's mm-hmm. see if I can okay. make you under, like kids a little better by the end of this. Yeah. Um, first, what are kids not? Um, <clears throat> so they are not you, which I think is actually pretty important. Uh, they're not you in the past, I want to say specifically, because uh, uh, I think a lot of times uh, yeah. I'd be like, hey, I want to give my kid <clears throat> the childhood I have, which is not possible because that was in the 80s. Yeah. And that doesn't exist anymore. Right. And yeah. they're not me. Right. And they don't have my parents. Um, yeah. They, in fact, the only thing we really know about them is they're just straight up new. Right, they mm-hmm. they they have not existed before. Um, they, that so we don't really have a great handbook uh, for for them specifically because they this is the first second of them being alive, which is so pretty wild. That I buy the first one for sure. Mm-hmm. The second one I'm a little rougher on. They've like because you know how like we were always like, oh, uh, snowflakes are infinitely different. Is everyone the same snowflake twice? And then later. We ran some models and we were like, well, we just didn't find any of the same. And we used to be like, fingerprints are like a perfectly unique, no one has the same fingerprints. And then we've had like multiple cases where the wrong person was arrested because like there's like eight people with every fingerprint. Like, how do we know this kid's never existed? Okay, I, mean, well, I guess you'd have but, to ask everyone. But, but, I mean, we'll are, go- you, are you saying that a human being is as complex as a fingerprint or a snowflake? I think that human beings are a little bit more. Got a little bit more going I mean, on. The look, fingerprint we were... is literally a portion of a human being. So I like, think about from your logic there already. Yeah. Even if fingerprints are similar across the board, right. that's one tenth of a small well, fraction then the, then the of a human was a being. Ver- you no know? better, better explanation because a snow like we were, you know, we were, we're millennials, literally snowflakes. So yeah, I mean, I I disagree in the sense that look. My kid is going to love everything I love. I'm going <laughs> to force all the media I love down their uh-huh. fucking stupid little throats. Yeah. I'm going to make sure that they are fucking little me. That's, That's... what I'm going to do with my kid. <laughs> I mean, it's I... interesting because it like definitely works to a large extent. Like if, you know, if you watch uh if you watch like a pro sport, like Three quarters of the pro tennis players, their dad was a tennis player, or like most but, of the golfers, but, li- like or the all the pro bowlers, their parents owned a bowling alley. Like it really does work to some extent. I mean, here's the, yes and no, right? In that, like you, I think one of the best ways you could be like really good at things if is if you had a parent who was kind of good at that. Thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Halfway right? yeah. good. Yeah, a rank amateur is a parent is a good way to set you up as a pro. Yeah, yeah. and that's um, so that, right. you know that's like a. Um, survivor's bias type of thing right like it is well, like true too, yeah. think you have to think about how many tennis pros kids are not tennis pros right you know what i mean yeah. like there's we just don't know it's the same thing with like like nepotism in hollywood has been a big thing over the last year like it's clearly a problem it really upsets me that like we don't like give a lot of young people new chances but 
There are so many actors' kids, directors' kids, who aren't in entertainment at all. We just don't know about them because they're in other fields, right? Like, yeah. The actual percentage of people who do what their parents do is is really rare. Yeah. And it, it also, it's like, it's it's kind of a new phenomenon because up till like a few hundred years ago, you didn't you didn't have a choice. If your name was Baker, guess what, dickhead? <laughs> You're a Baker. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. You yeah, didn't have that's a true. choice. That's true. So it's it, it's it's different. So so I I agree with all this. I think that that when I say yeah, the I guess the other thing that's making it hard, uh, not just that you know their new DNA stuff, uh, mm. and you know, it's this this family as a unit has never existed before. Also, yeah. right? Like, and it's changing kind of a long, whole long time. Yes, there's nepotism stuffs going on, but like this is a this is like one moment in time, and also they. As soon as you these these are shapeshifters that we're talking about. Yeah. Like not only do they actually literally grow, they figuratively <laughs> grow real fast. Uh, so if you figured it out, they are different, right? They yeah. are not like that. It's, 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 mm-hmm. it's, it's, these are wordles over here, right? They are oh. different every day. Yeah. Um, and I I want to kind of stress this because I think a lot of people have you know, if you choose not to have kids, you might feel like you're you know, people are pressuring you to. Yeah. Kids, I don't think are fundamentally necessary for a good life. What I want to say is that and in fact i think they they lead to i think may, definitely in lots of ways early on at least a much less happy life mm-hmm. um <laughs> yeah. but but i think what things do uh, what the thing the thing that kids do is that like they upend all of your way of thinking about who you are and what existence is in a way that's really interesting and helpful and if you can find that in any way it is worthwhile uh yeah. Just, but, uh, but yeah, I, I, I seem to have found it by having kids specifically. Yeah, but you know, so are like also hobbies are good. Yeah, hobbies also great. If yeah. you look, if if uh, if knitting can upend your view of yourself and your place in the universe and like your life up until then, that's arguably a lot easier. Yeah. So, uh, d- find find the thing that 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 changes the way you think. Mm. Uh, does not have to be a baby. Does not have to be a yeah. kid. Does not have to be your kid. You could just be just a also, good uncle. For a frame device on this, I, I think it's important to remember that you you also had children like fairly early on, and like as you know, as we discussed last week, you met your wife when she was fourteen, and so you you started as was I pr- pretty yeah. soon. <laughs> um, so uh, what? So how old were you when you you had your first kid? Uh, so we were we were twenty nine. Twenty nine. Okay, that's not, I mean that, this that's is early like, for now, not early for like yeah, 10, yes, exactly. 20 years this ago. Is, uh, yeah, this is yeah. um this was a we were first in our friend group basically. Yeah. And so, you know, I've yes. had the last I remember that. 9 years to sort of think about this. So, I'd, I'd like to, you know, if I can, yes. kind of present uh my laws of kids, which is, you know, uh, a series of loosely held contradictory ideas uh brought <laughs> okay. to you by, by Kia. Um I the way uh, kids are tough to explain. So, basically, yeah. I'm going to be using a lot of metaphors. Metaphors nice. uh, you know, real good way of explaining a thing uh that each of his metaphors, I think, is flawed in different ways because they are not, of, you know, kids. Because kids, whatever kid I'm talking about, there's nothing actually like them, uh, even on that day, right? Like, you know, so so we're not gonna we're not gonna zero in, but I hope this will be a little bit helpful in terms of how I've been thinking about kids and, and kind of like why this has been both an amazing thing and also like just a real ridiculous and also real terrible thing. You're using times. like a clip from a uh, teaching kids how to understand metaphors flashcard. I looked up kids and metaphors and this was the picture I got. Yeah. So right. just giving you some examples. He is a shining so, like, star and then we have. Yeah, he is a shining yeah. star. Life is a roller coaster. The world is a vampire. Her hair is a golden river. So that's the that's <laughs> the metaphors that are there. I the world was a stage in this picture, oh, but I do like world is a vampire. Stage. Oh, I misread that. I just heard for some reason. Yep. Anyway, either way, set to drain. All right, tell me as tell me some metaphors, some incomplete okay, dokes metaphors. Um, yeah, so basically, first, I think the thing pe- we get a little bit wrong about um, with kids is that we really focus on birth early on, which is basically like you're getting married, but you're only focusing on the wedding day as opposed mm. to being married. And I think mm. like a lot of the early stuff is like okay, this is what the what's the like the, had the perfect birth plan, all that stuff. And I think the thing we don't realize is that like. You basically, uh, at least to begin with, it is you've signed up for kind of an infinite, an infinite house guest. Basically, mm. this is like someone you invite over to your home, and they're just, they're just there. Yeah, like, the like, laziest forever, roommate like. ever. <laughs> just a quick yes. question: Are we allowed to throw rice at at uh, weddings anymore? 
I feel like we were, and then we weren't, and then and we are again. Is that right? No, I believe we're not uh, supposed to do it. It's also when, if you're in a stock tacky. photo, when we were kids, there yeah. was like, oh, no one throws rice anymore because it makes birds blow up. Bubbles. But I feel strongly that that was not true. It's a yeah, right. Mm. The, here's the thing, right? Don't they, pro- they probably eat grain all the time. There's rice everywhere. Also, birds do not blow up generally. Like if there was a place where birds were blowing Look, up, and Alex know. would know. He knows. He's tried. <laughs> He is. You say yeah. anything might blow up a boat. Alex is there. He's I mean, on it. Just, I just think I would have seen that video by now if that was possible. All right, I'm going to Google this. Yeah. Okay. Save so while you do that, Alex. <laughs> the the good thing about Throwing sort of this wedding has been a uh, tradition for a long time. Despite the rumor is not harmful to birds, is still banned at many venues because it is hard to clean up. Okay. Yeah. I mean that's really oh, yeah. the thing. It's just it's a dick move to do. Like. <laughs> Hey, I'm going to rent your space. Wait, and so I'm did the wedding suffering. venue industry start this rumor that it caused birds to blow up because they were tired of sweeping? Yeah, we employ a lot of birds, and it's not good for them. Uh, <laughs> they don't like cleaning it up. Um, no, that's funny. All right, sorry. So, so, I apologize uh, for getting... Oh, no, no, you good. you good. Digressions and being interrupted is a key part of the kid experience. Mm, yeah. um, so uh, b- basically, you, know, you have an infinite house guest to some extent. Uh, it's okay, though, for the first, I don't know, two to three years at least. Uh, this is the preseason. You don't actually have yeah, to worry yeah. that much mm. about, um, like, getting it perfectly Wins right. Wins and losses don't matter right now, yeah, right? Yeah, we're it's not, not game time. That's it's right, just, right. We're, right. We're working out the bugs. We're, we're, doing, right, we're right. running the plays. We're doing the drills. You know, yeah. Don't, we're, yeah. we're watching the tapes. Yep. You know, yeah, we're yeah. Not, right. Keep learning. Don't get injured. Yeah. Right? Season's yeah. going to be long. So, um, okay. But, I, Anthony, to kind of circle around, point number one that I want you to know, that everyone to know, um, you are fundamentally... Whatever it is, almost always worried about the wrong thing. Um, what I was worried about, you know, before uh, my son was born, was that he would not like me. Yes, um, mm. this is one that of my was top not an issue when he was zero years old. I really should have been worried about, like, you know, how quickly can I change a diaper at like two a.m. and go back to sleep, mm. right? Yeah, I think that's it's not the, it's not the wake ups; it's the inability to go back to sleep. That's mm. where you'll get like you know real messed up. Can, I, can first, I ask like, you a question? Yeah. I mean, especially oh, yeah. using the uh, sports metaphor before, like, what was, like, your best time? What's your pit stop? For changing a diet? Yeah, pit stop. That's a really good uh, metaphor best for this. pit stop. But, like, what is, like, I mean, what is, like, how quickly could you do well, it? Well, you were you saying know? the problem is not how fast the pit stop is. It's fast you can get back to sleep after the pit yeah. stop is the big issue. So but I am it's, curious. It's, it's not just speed, but it's, it's speed and with a half a brain, basically, right? Mm. It's the sleepy, the sleepy change. The sleepy fast change is what you're looking for. So you're trying so, I mean, to do the you're trying to change the diaper without fully waking up so that you can go right back to sleep. Yeah. Yes, <sighs> exactly right. Do you ever do the thing where you put your feet up on the bed and you lay on the floor? No. There's, there's like a there's like a it's like a military thing that they teach military people to go to sleep faster in the like in the middle of the day to be able to take naps. Is you lie on your back and you put your legs up on the bed. Apparently that like makes you fall asleep oh, quicker. I like that. No, I just I listened to Headspace like I was trying like to mm. meditate and then I fell asleep right away every time. Mm. Um, oh, that's I, I, like I would that. say you try like to do something that would be good for you, and it doesn't work. It fails yes. by you falling asleep. That's great. Yeah. Yes. Well, I got you know in terms of things that I'm worried about, like there's a lot of things I am worried about. Like the thing that I know is like the wrong thing, but maybe it's the right thing. It's not something I'm gonna have to worry about right now. But like, you know, one of the like the, like this memory I have from when I was a freshman in high school. I remember. I had a teacher, one of my favorite teachers came in one day, and he was just in this existential crisis, right? He was just, like, he was just, like, freaking out, and he was, like, really, really, like, somewhere else, and I asked him what was going on, and he, he started to tell me, like, you know, my job is to prepare you guys for the future, but I have no idea what the future is going to be. Most of you are going to work in jobs that literally do not exist right now, Right? Yeah. Most of you are going to do – how am I supposed to prepare you as a teacher for the future when, like, the future is going to be this crazy science fiction world and I have no idea what that is, right? And, like, you as, like, as you were saying, you know, your kid is nine. In nine years mm-hmm. alone, think about how much technology has changed in such a drastic, crazy way. Like, like one of the things that I know I'm not going to have to worry about for a long time is the crazy sci-fi gadgets my kid is going to have to be dealing with when yeah. he's 9 and 10 and 11. Like 15 years from now, I don't 
I, 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 just, I honestly can't even comprehend when, like, my kid's going to be sitting there with a fucking f computer chip in his brain looking at space TikToks or whatever. Yeah. And, like, space like, TikToks. It's, it's just, like, it's so... It's so hard for me to wrap my head around, and, like, I'm so worried about, like, this incredibly quickly changing world we live in. So, Ezra, would, would you, you say that's the right thing to be worried about right now or the wrong thing? No, I mean, it's, it's the kind of thing where it's like this is such a wide variance kind of uh, future that's, like, that's not going to help us any. Yeah. Right? Like, the, the, like right? It's like, um, like, or rather, I guess, the things that, the only if you don't know which way it's going to go you go back to like okay what is maybe like what was still maybe a helpful thing to teach a kid you know 100 years ago that could still be useful 100 years from now that right? change Where it's like, okay at mm. some point right they should be able to know like they should know if they're hungry or not and get how to get some food right mm. like basically to the to, can they know in their own mind i guess at the very least the mm. thing we're working on right now with, with caleb is like can you stop playing video games when you know you've had enough Mm. Mm. right and so like i don't care like what the thing is you're gonna no. be addicted to in the future can you figure out like how to say no or, like you know uh, you know at the tw at the point before it's too much right yeah, like can yeah. you figure out that 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 thing and that's like that is a helpful skill first of all i never I'm learned that work on i also. turned out fine um uh, second Did of you? all uh how are you going to teach them how to feed themselves if in the future they're going to use their brain chip to get space food yeah yeah i mean then i'll just teach them to read the manual that's always yeah, helpful. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's smart. Okay, that's it's really usually smart. manual. I like it. Good. Yeah. Um, I'm. I realized I'm gonna not actually say what number of these are, so, so you can cut them out if if it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, the next one up, Babe Ruth. Uh, yes, uh, Babe, like baby, is in the name. Uh -huh. But uh, I think Babe Ruth is a great example uh, because Babe Ruth um, hit 714 home runs, struck out uh, 1,000. 330 times. Boo, okay. what a loser. So here's the thing. Imagine Babe Ruth is your kid, uh -huh. okay? And sometimes Babe Ruth's going to hit a home run. Sometimes, probably two-thirds of the time, Babe Ruth is going to poop himself, mm. right? Right. Just goes up to try to, tries to swing the bat instead of hitting a home run, man. just straight up poops himself. Um, so I'm looking at this picture of Babe equivalent. Ruth you've selected, and I will just say the, one of the reasons he struck out so many times is he's holding too many bats. I think it's yeah. much harder to hit a baseball with three bats. Well, can I, can well, I just say why I don't watch baseball, but baseball is probably my favorite sport because look, look at this <laughs> pinnacle of human athletic prowess right here. I, I just love that baseball. Like, you look at every other sport. This is a weird tangent, but yeah. every other sport, you look at them and you're like, that is an Adonis God. Yeah, yeah. You look at any baseball player, the most fit baseball player, and you're like, that is my bar tender. That okay. is my barber. Like, that is just a guy. <laughs> have, who I, is, have I got hey. a, a modern athlete for you? Uh, the best modern athlete that you need to care more about it just won the NBA Finals for the city of Denver, Nikola Jokic. Uh, look at this man and tell me. I mean, he's like seven, eight, or something like that. He's very tall, mm. but other than that, pretty achievable body type. He yeah. he just looks like a dude. He looks like a tall dude, but he just looks like some dude. He is not an Adonis physique. He's just like a just a kind of a soft dude uh, who happens to be one of the greatest basketball players of all time. And Anthony, you might enjoy this. Hates playing basketball. Nice. Hates it. Yeah. During an interview after winning the the NBA championships. They were like, what are you looking forward to? And he was like, going home. And they told him there was a parade on Friday through the city of Denver. And he was so bummed he didn't get to go home today. And then he went on to say, look, everyone hates their job. That's just how it works. We all hate our jobs. And if you say you don't hate your job, you're lying. That's a guy who plays basketball for a living. Anyway, really, really likable dude. He did seem to get really drunk at the, at the parade mm. and have a good time. But anyway, so he's like the Babe Ruth of basketball in all of those ways. Mm. The, the, the thing that I, the reason I bring up Babe Ruth specifically uh, is I feel like kids are, if kids are the best thing ever, you have to sort of like look at the high variance basically because like there's amazing stuff they will do where it's like they will give you like a card they made um, that says that, you know, that they love you for no reason. But also, right, they will have a meltdown because like it is the wrong spoon. Yeah. And I yeah, think yeah. like, like if you are like, the kids are the best thing ever because like, it's just unlocking kind of like 
every possible thing, right? Like, imagine all these Easter eggs, right, uh, in the, the game of life, and they're just, like, uh, essentially just button mashing, like, the crap out of life. Oh, it's like, yeah. if I can do a thing, I'm going to do it. And, like, yes, m I will unlock something if it is unlockable, right? So that's what all the kids are doing, going around, just like, it's like kids are like playtesters of Earth. And they're just like, we're going to yes. find every wall that isn't actually as strong as it looks. So yes. what you're saying is that kids are a land of contrast. I, that, absolutely, they are. That's, right? That's like, so you get in that. I don't get that joke. I'm sure it's a good one, though. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. Um, Anthony, but, what's but the yeah, joke? Like, what's that, the land of contrast? What is the joke? Nothing. This is like, I, I like. I, I've I've just literally said that on almost every episode we've ever done. That it's a it's a land of contrast. I don't remember that. Oh, yeah. Wow, crazy. Okay, good. Play those Anthony. clips just for the, just for the Lopez heads out there who all caught it. They all had to drink when he said it. Yeah. No, I just <laughs> things are complicated. It's a land of contrast. Okay. What are you gonna do? All right. All right. Yeah. A little bit of both. Yeah. You know. That's all I'm trying to say. It's not really jokes. It's an observation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's just it, things will just be true. Um, yeah. But yeah. So it, it's a cool thing, right? You, we we've unleashed these like you know little scientists into the world that are just down to try anything, right? And sometimes okay. things make them laugh. Sometimes things make them cry. Yeah. And they're just like, they're just soaking it all in. Even if it's preseason, right? They are aware of it on some level. Uh, and they're just down to always try more stuff. That's a good uh, addition to your preseason metaphor is that the kids think they're playing for keeps. Yes. Right? They don't well, know it's preseason. Well, I got a question for you, Ezra, then, about this preseason thing. Like, yes. in the preseason time, if it's not working out, you can't trade your kid, right? You can't, like, well, request can't, a trade for August, a different I one. Think there's a deadline. Uh, is it, is it, is it, it's like the way you have a full year to change their name if you want yeah, to. Uh, right, right. right. Um, Here's the thing. Yeah. I think they, they always have a player option. You never have a team option. I think that's how it works. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> they can... <laughs> Um, they can request a trade, and I have. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, did not. Did not get uh, respect. Yeah, but I did ask. Um, but but no, I, I, I to serve a case in point of sort of like the the moment of contrast. Like so, in front of us, we have uh, a picture of a half-eaten, homegrown strawberry. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is relevant because um, <laughs> my daughter Maya is five. Uh, at one point, I heard her crying like just super loudly. Right. The reason she was crying is because um, she had picked the one strawberry for all of us to try, basically, and everyone else but me had like taken a bite of it, and so she was running hurriedly to try to give me the strawberry to try, uh -huh. and then she tripped and was just <laughs> bawling from this. And so if you think about like such a sweet moment of like, yeah, like my daughter wanting me to try the strawberry that everyone gets to try and being so excited to give it to me specifically that she did not see that like. The floor is uneven, right. and just totally eats it. Classic head um, injury. Yeah. Uh, this is a knee. She she actually is known. Apparently, she told me this. She's known at her preschool for being the one who gets all the knee injuries, <laughs> mm. <laughs> which is quite the legacy. I mean, uh, she has a friend who gets all the bug bites, the but NBA she gets all the injuries. Mm. De definitely, the Trailblazers have, have uh, drafted some real bad knee people over the years. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I just I love that as like oh you like you want to know what a kid is like. Like it's like all the joy and all the pain every single moment in different ways. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I love it. Okay, last bit. And I love that you took another a thing about kids. Kind of, yeah, yeah. I, I was like, I'm going to talk about this later. <laughs> um, last bit. Okay, so we have like like I said a young John Stewart. Yes. Um, uh, in half baked, and this is a classic uh, on weed guy. Yeah, right? yeah. So so he was saying uses weed as like a you know kind of an enhancer of things. Where it's like, have you ever you know looked at a dollar bill? It's like, on sure, weed. you're looking at a dollar, dollar bill on weed. <laughs> I kind of think that, like, one of the amazing things about kids is, like, you will see every single thing that you've ever experienced again if a kid is there in a different way, right? Mm. You don't understand what Target is until you've taken a kid to Target to, like, hang out. Uh, because have you been you to have Target to. on kids? Exactly. Hot chocolate with kids, amazing, mm. right? Like, just, just think about all the yeah. good things there are in the world. Like, you get to, like... Like, I get to show someone, like, the Beatles the first time, the Matrix the first time, like, yeah. gummy bears, a lot of good stuff in the world. It's amazing. And, like, to You don't want to show time... your kids how many Karen's kids, though. You don't want to watch that movie with your kids. No, oh, no, 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 yeah. That's the <laughs> one you don't... On kids, that's... You let you let your kids find their kids on their own. Right. You don't want to watch that with your that kids. They're 14 and their friend is like, you want to see a fucked up movie? Yeah, it's the equivalent of, hey, you want to see a dead body? That's exactly uh, right. It's It's the movie equivalent of that. This reminds he, me as of I'll, when I'll we did an old episode, episode of the old podcast about Denny's. 
and mm -hmm. all of us were like, I guess we had an okay time. And you're like, dude, you got to go to Denny's with kids. It, no, absolutely. It was so much better. And also, I want to let everyone know that my shorthand for, um, for not watching a movie is that if Anthony has brought up the director by name, and I don't know how to, I haven't heard of them, and I can't spell it, I was like, this is not going to be a movie I will like, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> like, this is going to be a bad time. Oh, you're not familiar with the movie Kids? Definitely not a kid-friendly thing. Mm. <laughs> Oh God, as I'm not, it's it's, I'm a, it's sure. everyone I know saw it at some point in their teenage years, but and the the introduction was somebody saying, "Do you want to see a fucked up movie?" That's, yeah, it's how many Korean the nah, guy did like Spring wanna... Breakers and stuff. He has a very specific style that he makes of movies. Um, he's an interesting guy. It does make you not want to have kids, I think. Yeah, or be have better kids. Noted. It's a real like don't do this with your kids type of kids movie. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. I mean, that's it helpful. Is. Yeah. Um, snacks. Okay, quick snack break, guys. Oh. What's everyone's favorite uh, favorite snack? First of all, I just want to say this is just, one of my favorite things either about from hanging your... out with parents. Mm. Like what? Like hanging out with my sister before and after she had kids. Way more snacks after. It just Look, really parents yeah. are the best at just having a bag with some snacks in it, and they'll sometimes share with adults. Is my experience. Yeah. Look, I, I like a lot oh, of yeah. these snacks. Yeah, Lunchables are pretty good. Roll-ups are great. If I ever met somebody who said, I want a snack, and then they opened a can of Chef Boyardee's <laughs> raviolis, I'd be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, that is, is not a is. snack. That is not a snack. Also, these that are is very... Food. I mean, I just Googled 90s snacks, all right? Um, Just, yeah, but I, I mean, I think fruit roll-ups, great. Uh, fruit roll-ups are awesome. These Go are Gert. very processed. You seem like you yeah. might be a family that would be like, you can have three almonds. Mm. Yeah, I mean, look, this is we do not snack this way. You do have um, carrot sticks and like, hummus in a bag, though, <coughs> don't you? Well, I mean, like like an apple apple pouch, totally yeah. good, right? Mm. Just apple sauce. Um, but yeah, I, I think the main thing is like uh, army uh, marches on its stomach. Yeah, like you want to have a good time. You're going to need to have some snacks nearby. That is yeah. such always, a always, great always. parenting it's thing on the way out is just remember that an army marches on its stomach. That's so funny. Yeah. Because I, most uh, of the time, no, you should I've know where's your next meal difficult your next to hang bathroom? out with is because I was hungry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bring, bring, bring your snack bars or uh, whatever it is. I mean, like, whatever you need, you know, take care of you. And, like, you know, go to the bathroom early and often. Another weird thing that I worry about going with kids is, you know, like my wife and I, we love going to, um, we love going to the movies. We love going out and doing things together. And kids just make everything exponentially more expensive, you know? And, like, the idea of, like, like a movie is relatively cheap compared to, like, going to an amusement park these yeah, days yeah. where the prices are just insane. Yeah. But then they get you because they know you have to feed your kids. Yep. So, like, you go to an amusement park and that's where the food is, like, really expensive. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, that, does, that is a worry. Also, they're, yeah. like... Here is every like spinny light up thing that is exactly the kind of thing a kid wants for ten minutes yeah. and costs forty bucks. Like they make a zoo so that you have to say yeah. no to your kids a million times. The, the the in some ways it's amazing to go to the zoo. It's really basically the thing about having a kid is you really have to understand what would it be like to make this one decision that I just made. 1,000 times. <laughs> if that sounds exhausting, it's not the right decision. Yeah. So if you're saying like, hey, guys, we don't get, uh, we, we don't <laughs> like buy this stuff at the gift shop. We just don't. We can look. We don't buy. Yeah. And I think that's helpful to sort of like, you make that first. It's a bad fight the first time. I can live with that, right? Oh, it's going to be smart. better every single time as opposed to being a fight every single time. So yeah, what, yeah. What, like think about this. Multiply it by infinity. And are you going to have a good time from that choice or not? Oh, um, that's so smart. Okay, everyone rested? That's everyone feeling good? good? Yep. You have to go to the yeah, bathroom right cool. now? Yeah. No, I'm good. All right, no. let's keep on going. No. Oh, wait, I do have to Wait, go. yeah, that's good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Same joke. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh, man, what Whoa, is what this? What the hell is I that? I have in front of you. Is this a real this thing? This is a 21 by 21. Yes, this is a real thing. This is a 21 by 21 sided uh, Rubik's Cube. Wait, what? Oh, How I hate this. How do you even um, move it? How... I gotta see yeah. this in action. I mean, it, yeah, yeah. It's a real thing. Yeah, don't, it, it's it's a real thing. It's cool. I, I was trying to look for an infinite Rubik's cube. Uh, I couldn't do it because those mm. don't exist. Unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mean, hey, there's a market for it. You know, find, make it. Yes. He, here's the thing that I, I'd like to sort of say. Like, so with the Rubik's cube, is difficult three by three. People can solve it, right? Um, yeah. It's like there's an algorithm that you can do it. 
Um, the thing about kids that we're going to get to, I think, with, with advice is that people have advice for how to raise kids. Like, everyone has an idea. Um, but a kid is not like a regular Rubik's Cube or even a 21 by 21 Rubik's Cube. A kid is essentially an infinite Rubik's Cube that changes every single day. Mm-hmm. And there's not really a way to solve that. Um, there's not really a way to do that best. So you're going to kind of mess it up. And I think the thing with like any advice, it might help a little bit. You're probably going to get stuck. And then hopefully you just kind of, uh, you hopefully like do a little bit better than maybe your parents did trying to like, you know, raise you. I think that's the best, that's the best goal you kind of have with these, like this chain of infinite Rubik's cubes. Um, I mean, that is that's, like, that's, that's my dream specifically. Realistically, mm-hmm. that is like when Heather and I, my wife and I talk about these sort of things, like the one thing that I like uh, that helps me so much um, with this is that there is no way in hell I could fuck this up more than my parents did. <laughs> right? Like there is that is impossible for yeah, me to yeah, be yeah. a worse parent than my parents were for us. Anthony, I'm assuming you've seen Snowpiercer. Oh yeah. Um we are all living on a train and you kind of move through the cars, right? Um and the thing that I, you realize when you have kids is you know, you think the people in the car to, car ahead of you they know what they're doing. And then when you're in the car ahead, you're like, "Oh no. It's like it's the same. It's in like an infinite train, but no one has any better idea. Like my parents didn't have a better idea of like what to do when they are parents than uh than I did before I became a parent. And so it's like, that's like a kind of a wild and like little scary thing, uh, but like a very cool thing also that in that shift, uh, the other picture I have here is like, you got a magician. It's like, you know, you've been watching magic happen the whole time. And then you get to be the magician and be terrified. And you're like, Oh, this is what it was like for them. Mm. Um, you know, it's not that there's like a different kind of person. It's just, it's just you, you just got a promotion to middle manager that you maybe did not realize you were ready for. Um, and you're like now kind of co-signing all these really bad things uh, in Earth uh, that you're like, oh, I guess, I guess I have to tell you about this, which is not great. Uh, I was like, well, th- this is a thing that humans do. That's that's real bad. And um, and and then we just have to. Mm. Hopefully, you'll figure this one out. We haven't figured this one out yet. Um, but maybe you'll be better. And I love what? this like kind of mix of what? terror and optimism. I yeah. guess. Yeah. What um, is the uh, the worst news you've had to break to your kids oh. about? Like not like personal news but just like a concept like war right, right, right. or um, like you know this is like kind of a Santa's bummer and too heavy real, you know uh, well, well some, they always knew Santa's wasn't real because we're Jewish okay. so that's fine okay, um, yeah, yeah. The, the, um, I, here's, here is I think the, 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 the answer that I feel comfortable giving on this one which is that when I had to tell them about the prequels for Star Wars <laughs> that was a rough one <laughs> so you know how this series you like is perfect and you've enjoyed every moment of it i have oh. terrible news well and then and then later when uh episode nine came out that was another one where it's like it was like but don't worry don't worry guys i, I think that the, you know the, the next series might be good and there's like oh well actually yeah you, you know what again. i kind of wish this one didn't exist also so i just want to go but yeah there, there's one time where actually this is an interesting thing where it's like there's a time in every parent's life when they try to protect you know their kids from all the bads of the world and at some point they want to watch the prequels and you're like you know i guess i can't protect them from everything yeah, you can't yeah, you but can't i mean the thing is the prequels at school you know the yeah. thing is fucking kids love the prequels <laughs> i know that's, right? the, other like, thing. that's <laughs> the thing it's like that's why like the prequels have been reclaimed and like i mean i've said this before on the show but like modern star wars has made me appreciate the prequels in a whole new way like I I would rather my kids watch the prequels than watch most of Disney Star Wars. Like I I genuinely think the prequels at least will be like they have imagination and they show my they'll show my kids interesting things, not to show my kids the same exact shit they have already seen a I million think, times from watching the originals. You yeah, know what if I mean? you have a if you have a ten year old boy that wants to go watch pod racing, fucking do it. Like yeah, gonna have a great yeah. time. It, and I, I will say this is the on weed kind of thing where it's like have you watched the prequels with a kid is way oh, more yeah, fun yeah, yeah. for sure yeah, yeah. um i, I just so. want to say really quick before because we have to move on but i want to say uh, before we miss it uh snow piercer other lesson other way that this is a good analogy a good metaphor sometimes kids hands are very useful because they're so small yeah i don't 
know if that's you don't remember that part. I don't want to spoil the ending of Snowpiercer, but kids have these little tiny hands that are really useful. Yeah. <laughs> Great. All right, Ez, what else is on here? I mean, oh, and I, also I think really quick, I wanted to say that you the know 21 what? by 21 Rubik's Cube costs a thousand dollars. Makes sense. It looks like a thousand dollars worth of engineering. It does I look couldn't. like a lot of engineering. I mean, per cube, that's a good price. I think for <laughs> yeah, each yeah. each individual one. <laughs> that's a good point. Well, uh, point is, uh, kits are interesting, complex, make your life better, and I think there's probably a right amount of them. So, like, you know, maybe don't get twenty one by twenty one of them, uh, mm -hmm. but like, like having some kid in your life, like where whether it's uh, you know you being an uncle, uh, you know you like you know maybe. Uh, being a, a big brother, you're volunteering, uh, like, like you actually having a kid, if that's the thing you want. Uh, I think like the wonder and just wildness, like sheer possibilities unlocked from kids, it makes it, for me at least, uh, one of the best things ever. Sort of as we're getting ready to have a kid, you know, again, I can't speak to the, the sort of experience that Ezra has, but sort of like as we've gotten ready, something that like my wife and I keep sort of talking about and sort of this process is pen perspective is the idea that like every single person on the planet had so much work and effort that yeah. went into them when they were a baby right it's like it's something like you intellectually know but you can't really grok that even idea you can't yeah but uh, just yes. even, regardless even the people you never see of the people we don't care about as a society on the fringes right. the most successful people whatever the minor every characters. single person who has ever lived do this you feel like notion, some of that effort though was like wasted because a lot of those people i never see like they're not even that important i, I, <laughs> not I mean well rendered for you <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah they're like i only it only renders the ones in front of me well alex you also believe that like when people aren't around, they don't exist, right? You're like, yeah, yeah, of you, course. Uh, you're well, they, very they, solipsistic They need to be way. imagined by me in order to have existence. It's a, yeah, it's yeah, a classic you know. a Barclay philosophy. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the other sort of thing that I, I've been thinking about a lot is sort of watching, as I as have watched my wife go through this, is like, again, kind of like what I was talking about at the beginning of like this – these quiverful families. Oh, yeah. Right? These families oh. that are, like, obsessed with having as many children as they can. Right. That's why and, Ezra like, was doing this presentation. Yeah. Uh, and this, like, <laughs> this this notion is, like, especially what we're kind of seeing in this very gross way. It's, like, this sort of, like, weird crypto-fascist family that's obsessed with, like, breeding genetically superior kids and having a lot of them that keeps getting, like... Um, like stories published about them you yeah, know? yeah um and it's just like it kind of goes into the thing of like what kids aren't and kind of like what is like a weird arrows reason for to Jesus, have kids. you're saying is one of the things yeah. kids aren't yeah exactly or just arrows for like the population of mankind as like something that we need to like breed superior versions of and like these weird sort of like eugenics families out yeah there. and it's just like it's just really made me like like it, it's like minus like the judging people or whatever. Just watching my wife go through this once has like really put the context of like these people who go through this like nineteen times, nineteen twenty times. Yeah. Like I could not, genuinely could not imagine. Um, That's crazy. That it's just it's unbelievable. Ezra, mm -hmm. you got some TV suggestions before we go. I mean, mainly I'll say you're looking for TV that you can watch. And not feel bad afterwards. So mm -hmm. I always recommend Sesame Street, Storybots, uh, Daniel Tiger, Archibald's Next Big Thing, Gravity Falls uh, is like a great one where it's like for, for an older crowd. Uh, stuff that has had consequences for us where it's not bingeable. Like, oh yeah, you got to keep a, a tight, a tighter watch on this. Teen Titans Go. Um, I, I thought it's really funny, but uh, sometimes the kids don't realize that like you can't eat food the way the characters eat food. And mm -hmm. that was the thing, conversation we had to have. Well, how uh, the big City Greens, eat food? They're pretty sassy sometimes. Well, they, you know, it's just, just, and it's just it's not good. It's it's a good mm. lesson. Maybe it's not a good lesson for a lot of things. Actually, it's a good lesson for maybe comedy writing, but maybe not for like model behavior. Interesting. Uh, and there's some of the ones like that are super annoying. Blippy, I, I did not like. Peppa Pig. Yeah. There's there's anyway. I guess what I'm saying is, do your research. Don't let the algo just give you what it wants to give you. Some of that's real bad. I think that's. Well, that's, have you um, but have you watched like I I can't wait to like watch like Avatar: The Last Airbender. With yeah, me, right? that was like, amazing. That's... Yes, that was a lot of fun. We watched both both uh, Avatar and, and, and Legend of Korra, and like, uh, that... that was 
kind of experience just seems so like that is the type of thing, like I already think Avatar: The Last Airbender is like up there with the greatest works of fantasy ever written, like of any medium for adults for kids. I genuinely think that show is incredible, and like watching that with a kid seems really fun. Um, but in kind of the things of like you have to be careful. Have you ever like been wor- like, or had seen like um. These like AI generated YouTube shows oh, that are yeah. made oh, yeah. with like no, that. and that we they're just, just like... designed for kids to like autoplay from one to another, and it's like Elsa and Spider Man and the Joker yes. hanging we out. Saw a ice cream or whatever. We saw a couple of those, and we we're like, oh no, we got to stop this. And so just the kids were not really on YouTube at all. Just like I don't yeah. really trust the. Anyway, I guess the point is, it's a joy to like watch stuff with your kids, but like. If you don't want to watch it, they probably shouldn't be watching it either. Have you like that's that's have you guys heard of the uh, the like kids bands out the algorithm bands? It's like the 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 people who made the song like Poopy Stupid Butt made a made a hundred million dollars last year or something on Spotify because no. kids will ask their uh, like Amazon devices to play Poopy Stupid Butt as a joke, and then that's a song, so it'll come up and they'll get another nickel or whatever. Mm. It's kind of. Sad and clever. This is kind of sad uh, and clever. Um, yeah. I think we should rank it. I think, Ezra, you've set us up correctly. Yeah, it's time. Let's okay, rank it. Let's so. find out. But first, a brief advertisement. This show is brought to you, as always, by our Patreons, our wonderful besties over at patreon.com slash btepod. That's patreon.com slash btepod, where uh, you can get great things. You can get uh, uh, f- imaginary things, like we can say thank you. And you can get physical things, like shirts and mugs. Um, and I think I'll make a mug that says human children are the best thing ever, because I think that would be a funny thing to sell. And mm-hmm. you could get that by becoming a bestie at a certain level. I don't remember what level 10, I think, at the founder level. Anyway, we really appreciate everybody who supports the show. Mm-hmm. Patreon.com slash btepod. So, Ezra. Yes. I want to start off with a question for you. So, you, you have two kids. Yes. Mm-hmm. Nine and how old? Five. Five. Okay. Just those nine what, to five kids. If you had to <laughs> divide, divide them into like a, a one to two, two to four, you know, five to six, whatever, um, would you say certain ages are better than the others? Like, what age range would you and, rate and between the, the highest? Two, which, is the, which do you prefer? Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, they they do ask you to rate them like where it's like which one do you like more? Uh, yeah, which, do they? I would say, oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Sure. Don't ask a question you don't want the answer to. Kids, no, no, so no. That's, no. An important that's, that's a trap. Obviously, that's a trap. Uh, do not answer. And also, like, it's not it's not a thing you really can think. You don't really have for me at least. I do not have favorites because I both like infinitely love and also am infinitely exhausted by my mm-hmm. kids. At all times, I'd say. And so it's just like, it's all things all, all the time. Um, but uh, in terms of best like best time, like for, I think actually it's a thing where people have their own preferences and they're all kind of like reasonable. Um, so there's not like, I think I like, uh, I don't think anyone's favorite time is like the first eight weeks because that's just real brutal. Um, mm. So so that's at least that's at least a thing that that I'd say like that one's bad for the most part at least you know it has some cool things but like also like not not anyone's favorite um after I uh, no man I think I think two, the, in that 2 to 4 range like gets pretty cool like I think 4 4 is like probably a part where it's like starts getting that's where it starts getting a little bit easier and you get some real cool stuff from there on but like it, it generally gets so far at least the arc is I think it just keeps on getting better fundamentally like yeah. at least like for now, it's like this is a good traject- upward trajectory. But there is like a point, like thirteen, where it's just all downhill. I mean, again, people say this for sure, but also like uh, I didn't get into the advice section of it, but it's like everything you ever hear about kids, there's an equal and opposite bit of advice mm-hmm. about it, where it's like right, some people yeah, yeah. really can dig that time, for yeah. example, and yeah, it the, just really, really varies. You haven't heard any of your kids be like, "God, Dad." Yeah, yeah. Not, like, not that not hasn't happened. Oh, yet. well, no. There's that... absolute. There's look. There's sass in all kinds of ways, but there's also so much like overwhelming love. So it's just mm. it's all it's all of it all the time. Mm. Where it's like like my, like, like my will be like, I never want to be your daughter again. And then like maybe like, you know, sort of like a half an hour later, it'd be like, like never leave me. I love you so much. Yeah. And like mm. it's just it's all the things. Uh, and you have, and, and so how I, you I decide think... between which of those two things you're gonna do? 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know, I was like, you know what? We'll, just, we'll have a snack. We'll, 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 we'll just circle back around. And we'll just have a, let's have a nice cold can of, uh, of, of spaghetti O's and <laughs> yes, then go back to work. Yes, you're, you're a cold spaghetti host. Okay, so we have to rank this 1 to 19. We already had some pre-rankings. I am assuming we've not gotten worse, although I'm going to say, Ezra, not that you have not done an impeccable job. It's a really interesting presentation, and I do love the way you talk about parenting. But you have not made it sound like more fun than I thought it was. Yeah. Um, well, I don't think – look, I will say this. If you're going to have a kid because you want to have the most fun possible, you're going to have a bad time. Yeah. Like, that's not, that's not the point of it. If you want to have, I'd say, the, the most maybe – the best single moment, maybe followed by two times where, where Babe Ruth poops himself. Yeah, right, right. Like, that's about what you're going for. So I think it's, it's just a high, a high variance best thing. If you want the widest range of human existence, that's definitely going to be part of it. Um, I'd put it above Zelda personally just because when you're doing a lot of work on a kid, uh, like, you know, like to, to raise them and make them good, people generally are more proud of you than if you do a lot of work on Zelda. See, I, I think, though, if you solve a problem with a kid... You don't get that doo -doo 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 jingle, you don't. Though, yeah. right? And that's really a big problem, right? If, if every time I helped a kid, I heard that jingle, I, I would agree with you. But I, I really can't. I mean, I genuinely think, especially because so much of my childhood was defined by my love of pro wrestling and mm -hmm. sort of the culture around that, some of the best friends and best memories I had and, like, watching. Like, me and my parents didn't play video games together. But we watched wrestling together, right? So, like, to me, I really feel that, like, around pro wrestling, either behind it or in front of it, to me, that's what my vote is going to be. Um, I get that. I, I will have to, for myself, vote number one. Uh, one, because that would be real weird if I didn't for my kids, I think, as I mm -hmm, experienced mm -hmm, listening to this. Mm -hmm, but also, mm -hmm. like, I can't think of any of those things that aren't made better, basically, with kids, right? So it's like... Firefighters, kids love fire trucks. Oh my god, they yeah. love them so much. And also, a lot of firefighters used to be kids. You know, people That's don't know so that. true. Uh, yeah. Zelda, Zelda, as an experience, has very much been like a kid-driven thing, where it's like it's yeah. with the family. Um, yeah. And warm beverages also. It's like we we are a family that gets a lot of a lot of hot chocolate, a lot of treats, yeah. a lot you of warm beverages. A lot of romances anyway. together. Uh, we do not, but we do like books. Yeah, mm -hmm. Andrew, got. I got. I gotta say though, it's a it's a risky gambit. Pitting if you're saying it has to be number one, because there's a good chance it's gonna end up number twenty five or something <laughs> like that when it loops around. And do you want to be responsible for that? So here's you, here's the problem. I do not have any experience uh, with having kids of my own, um, and I think if I'm ranking other people's kids, it's below fresh bread. And so it's just I cannot speak to the thing you're talking about. So what I'm going to do is, Ezra, you are in charge of my vote. You can put my vote anywhere you want on this list because I don't know. So I have to trust you. So tell me how I feel about this. I think uh, – okay, I think you put it below arcades. Okay. I think it, it's, it's above Totoro and below arcades. I think like yeah. it is – like you've had a movie watching experience, like I think when you saw Up, that mm -hmm. a kid made it better for sure. And I think like – that that's I think that's where you would maybe like land it because I don't. Can I, I, Ezra? Can I hear you explain this in like your best like? All right, buddy. Let me tell you how you <laughs> feel about this list. Like, give me give me some of that dad voice. Oh, you know, yeah, like like, yeah, like yeah. kneel down, look Alex in his in his in his small beady little eyes. And, <laughs> normal and tell him, eyes, I think, but and tell a him, normal amount of beads. Yeah, tell him like like, hey, buddy, come on. Let me let me tell you what well, I think I, it should be. So here, here's here's actually the weirdest thing about like current models of uh, parenting uh, is that you don't really actually have to tell kids what, what to think. It's weird. You just, you don't, you don't really give them your own ideas. Huh. You'd be like, I'd be like, so Alex, I don't know. Like when you check inside your body, how does it feel to put it at number five? Well, so About I feel Toronto. right now then if you think my vote is four and you think your vote is one and Anthony's vote is five, that we're probably in the four ish range. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I think that I, averages out pretty well. I think four or five. So it's above or below arcades. Anthony, final vote. You get the last chance. See, I, I almost feel like my I like the kids in my neighbor Totoro more than almost any kid I've ever met in real life. Uh, but the, <laughs> them being kids makes them kids be above Totoro. Yes, but the thing is, it makes it makes other kids in real life just seem even more disappointing that they're not uh, running around made, with made corn. You know, I, screaming about how they want to see their mother. Right? We have to I go, just, so I'm going to have to say that it sounds like we've averaged out to five, and we're going to have to yeah, keep that. that That's where we're at. We're at five. Uh -huh. All right. Um, we have 
quick minutes to get out of here. Okay, two quick uh, corrections I have to make. Last week, during our fun fact segment, two, two uh, hosts and a lie, I said that I ate a 15-scoop ice cream, 15-topping ice cream Sunday when I was a child. I did not. It was eight scoops of ice cream, eight toppings. So How did you get that so wrong? I just added them up and then did it again. But the point is, I have I since went back and looked at photos of it, and it is still disgusting. So it was eight too many massive scoops. They were big. They were trying to hurt you. Like they came over <laughs> with the intention of making this unpleasant. Like they did not want to buy another plaque. That's how it worked. Anyway, I apologize for the error. If you want to see the pictures of me with my. 15 year old pockmarked face realness you can go on tiktok or instagram you can see my video about eating that ice cream sunday and then another thing i want to add so last week as a fun fact i said anthony had never had covid and that was a lie he had but ezra piped up that you had never had covid you'd gone this far so mid 2023 never had covid what happened to you ezra i got COVID. you got COVID. you spoke it into existence you shouldn't yeah, have said is, anything it's and this classic, week like, he's gonna casters yeah mistake this week he's gonna get a blood parasite from an. Uh, oh no! Wait, zoo. Oh, we haven't got. I could have had blood parasites also, before. It's fine. That is plausible. Um, also coming up next week. So those are the corrections. Next week on the show, we're gonna be talking about Star Wars. So it came up a little bit here. We're gonna be yeah. talking about all of Star Wars. So this was our uh, our drawing winner, Laura, who participated in the listener survey. Uh, was name was drawn from the the hat uh, that prefers that prefers Anthony and. Uh, as the prize chose to choose a topic for us to talk about. So next week we're going to talk about Laura's topic, Star Wars. And Laura says this, there are very few people in the world that would say Star Wars is the best thing in their life, but there are millions that would state it is a very good thing. And if mm. something is a very good thing in millions of lives across generations and nationalities, I think it's in consideration for best thing. And yeah. I love that. Instead of trying to aim for what is the number one thing for everybody, what's the number four thing for the most people? I think that's a good way to think about it. So, I, I, Star Wars coming smart. up next. I uh, I am very excited. I imagine I'll be taking the lead on that. I would love uh, to hear imagine. your like yeah. history of Star Wars, and or even just like Star Wars facts I don't know. I think that would no, be great. Yeah. I, oh yeah, there's, there's a fascinating story behind the making of Star Wars. So. I can't wait. All right, that'll be next week. Let's go. Uh, that is it for our show. Uh, our theme, theme music is by at Matrix. Our logo design is at Tom Typography. We're on Instagram at BTE Pod and YouTube. You can follow us at Alex Falcone. You can leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, an honest five star review, please. Also, you can email us mail at bestthingeverpodcast.com. The producers of the show are the Ranger Rick, John the Consigliere, the Duke of Jill, the best assistant regional manager, Sean, and Claire, still TBD. All right, the winner of the fact that was not true from two hosts and a lie was Anthony's blood parasite from a petting zoo. I just made that up. That's two weeks in a row I made up something about your health. Yeah, Ezra, watch out. I'm just well, saying. Anything that I say about Anthony happens to you the next day. So I don't yeah. love this. Yeah, no, this is a weird book. Yeah, I, I take it up with Alex. Don't get upset with me. <laughs> I'm not the I, one putting this on you. You have Do been, good things next time. Ezra yeah. has been uh, to Hawaii more than ten times. Yeah. But less than a thousand. Yeah, Which... next next week, say Anthony just won twenty million dollars in the lottery <laughs> as the lie. My, let's kind see of what balance happens. it out for Ezra. Come I, on, I can't wait. And then uh, it is true that I'm not I'm not legally allowed to work for the Target Corporation. Uh, when I was 16, my first ever job was at Mervyn's, California, then owned by Target Corporation, now out of business, but Target owned them. And I left without giving a full two weeks notice. And on the way out, they were like, you're never allowed to work for the Target Corporation. And it has never been a problem for me. It's yeah, not I got me back once. I got to say, the fact that it's legally, like the fact that the Senate passed the law about this <laughs> specifically is really well, fucked up. I mean, it's up. a binding, I don't know, I don't know. Do they even yeah, still have a database of Mervyn's employees who left with only 10 days notice? It. No, yeah. I think you should give it a shot just to see what happens. I should apply yeah. for a Target job. I've been waiting I'm for it. I want to be, like, successful enough that they're, like, offering to sponsor a podcast, and then they look into their detail, their employment history, like, oh, oh sorry, no. we can't. Turns out, uh, we respect be right the Mervyn's right. law. You should do like an Andy Kaufman thing and yeah, and just to. work at Target for no good reason when you don't need to once you get famous. That's just a good like, idea. All right, yeah. my name is Alex. You can find more about me on TikTok at Alex underscore Falcone. Ezra can be found on his newsletter. Delete this newsletter at Substack.com. Ezra, anybody to thank? Yeah, my kids, Caleb and Maya. A lot of, lot of good years, a lot of research. Very helpful. Lots of love. Yeah, 10 years of research with Caleb, and uh, that's really impressive dedication yeah. for him. 
And Anthony, <laughs> thank you for joining us. Good luck on your being a parent. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, my wife and I have done equal amount of woke at this point in, uh, <laughs> having the kid. Um, so I really feel like, you know, she needs to pick up some of the pace, do a little bit more woke, carry some more of the weight. But, I, hope um, she, I hope she I hope she finds it in her heart to do that. All right, we'll yeah, talk to everybody next week. Bye. 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 Bye.